Good Monday morning, my friends. Our snowstorm was a bit of a bust. Eight to 12 inches? I don't think so. But guess what? I still get a snow day out of it because they were expecting a lot, so they called all the schools off yesterday. And so all my little guys are staying home with their teacher parents. So I still get a snow day. So I have a lot going on today and a lot I want to accomplish. So let's get started. Good morning again, my friends. As you can see, it's been a very busy day here already. It's what I like to do. I love to keep busy, and especially on snow days, because snow days make you want to eat. As long as I keep busy, I'm not going to snack. So as you can see, I've been very busy this morning. Um, and now I am going to get breakfast in the oven. We are making baked oatmeal custard this morning. So I, you saw me throw the oatmeal in the Instant Pot to cook it because you have to start with cooked oatmeal. So that's done. I'm going to get all the ingredients mixed, get it in the oven so we can eat by, Doug likes to eat around 9.15, 9.30. So I want to get that going and 
get the Instant Pot cleaned out so I can get my bone broth going. So let's get started. Okay, I have a um, 11 by eight baking dish that I sprayed with some nonstick spray. You really should use a nine by nine, but I don't have a glass nine by nine. I don't know why. I have an eight by eight, so I decided just to use this close enough. In this bowl, I have one and a half cups of 1% cottage cheese. And to that, I'm going to add two cups of cooked oatmeal. And I just did that in the Instant Pot this morning. And then I'm gonna add two eggs. One cup of cashew milk. You can use unsweetened almond milk. You can use unsweetened cashew milk. You can use regular milk and just add the points for it, whatever. And then I'm gonna add a half a cup of Lakanto monk fruit. And I put cinnamon in the oatmeal when I cooked it in the Instant Pot, so I'm not gonna add any cinnamon. But if you didn't do that, you would add a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then I'm gonna add about an eighth of a teaspoon of cardamom. Half a teaspoon of vanilla. And half a teaspoon of almond extract. I don't know if you can hear outside, but it is sleeting, freezing, raining, windy. It's really horrible out there. And then we are just going to mix this well. Then we are just gonna dump it in our baking dish. We're gonna pop it in a 325 degree oven for a while, it takes a long time to bake. It takes about an hour to an hour and 10 minutes. I'm gonna start checking it at 45 minutes. You just wanna make sure it is all set. Now I have this serving four people. That's a really generous serving. Um, we're really generally hungry at breakfast time because of our workouts in the morning. So I tend to eat a pretty substantial breakfast. Four servings on blue and green is four points. If you cut it into four servings, one serving is four points on blue and green and two on purple. So pretty good on the points. I mean, if you cut it into six, you know, it's a lot less points. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna pop that in the oven and I'll show you it when it is done. And I think I am going to make a homemade berry sauce to top it with. Okay, it's time to get my bone broth started because that will take all day. I've never made it before in the Instant Pot, so we'll see what happens. I have the carcasses of, I know this was a roasted chicken, and this might have been a turkey. I'm not really sure. Um, doesn't matter. And I'm going to fit in as much as I possibly can. And I also threw in the pot some carrot, two carrots just rough chopped and an onion rough chopped. And I think that's about all I'm going to fit in here. I really kind of wish, I, I like my six quart instant pot, but 
I almost wish I had an eight quart one for doing things like this. It would be really nice because, you know, you can't fill it all the way up. You have to do like two thirds. Let's see how much we can shove in here. Kind of like playing Tetris. Oh, look at that. One of the skewers. Yeah, this must have been our Thanksgiving turkey. That is hysterical. Actually, I think I can pretty much get all of it in here. So what I'm going to do is get all my bones in there. And I've got my veggies in there, like I said. Probably should have put those on top, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna throw in a couple peppercorns. I'm not gonna put any salt in because one of these was a roasted chicken and the other was my turkey. So they were seasoned the first time they were cooked and I don't wanna get any more seasoning in there or any more salt to add it. When I go to use the bone broth, if it needs salt, I can add salt then. So then I am just going to fill it with water, but only until the bones are covered. I am not going to put in any extra water because you don't want it watered down. You want it nice and concentrated. Now, like I said, this is the first time that I have made this in the Instant Pot. So I did a little research and of course, everybody's got their own way to do it. Cause you know how that goes. So I decided to cook it for a long time. I want every bit of nutrient and collagen and all that that I can possibly get out of the bones. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it on low pressure. Whoops, wait a minute. How do I put it to low pressure? Oh, pressure level. I'm going to put it on low pressure and I am going to do it for I've never done this before. I'm gonna do, I wanna cook it for six hours. I guess I could have gone backwards. So I'm gonna set it for six hours on low pressure and just let it go all day. So I just learned the highest you can go time-wise is four hours when you're pressure cooking. So what I'll do is I'll let it go four hours and when it's done, I'll just put it on for another two. So we'll see what happens. Like I said, this is first time I'm doing it in the Instant Pot. I just realized I forgot my celery. I gotta put that in. Okay, the baked custard oatmeal is almost done, so I am starting on the berry sauce. And I just have a cup of mixed berries here. It's blueberries and uh, blackberries. That's what I had as far as fresh berries. I was gonna use frozen, but I figure I might as well use the fresh up. So I have a cup of that, a couple tablespoons of water, a teaspoon of cornstarch, and a tablespoon of monk fruit, Lakanto monk fruit in there. And I'm just going to mash them down a little bit because I like it kind of saucy, not necessarily too chunky. Plus it releases all the juices from the berries and creates more liquid. And then I just let it cook for about five minutes or so. You'll know when it's done. It gets clear and 
And by clear, I don't mean clear like transparent. I mean clear like, see how this is kind of foggy? It gets um, like a nice clear purple to it and it'll get thick. So just a couple minutes and then that'll be ready when the oatmeal is done. Okay, breakfast is out of the oven and it looks delicious. We'll see how it tastes. It is the oatmeal custard bake or something like that. Um, it is four points for this serving for the oatmeal. I have one point's worth of vanilla creamer on there and then zero points for the berry syrup. So I have a five point breakfast on the blue plan this morning, five points on the green plan, three points on the purple plan. Okay, I'm getting the pasta started. I took my ball and I cut it in half and I'm running it through my pasta machine on the widest setting, which for me is eight. And I just run it through fold it in half, I do it vertically and horizontally, and I just keep running it through. This essentially is kneading the dough. So I'll fold it vertically, I'll fold it horizontally, and I do this about probably eight times or so. And then I'll start decreasing and go down to like six, run it through. Decrease it again, run it through until I get it all the way down, super duper thin. And you can see each time you run it through, it just gets longer and longer. So I'm just gonna keep doing that with this piece and then start on the next piece. And then we'll get the noodles cut. Now we are going to just feed it through on the cutting blade. And there comes our pasta. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Now I used one cup of flour, one egg, and a little bit of water. So it's going to be the same points as boxed pasta, which is six points for, it'll be half the, half the amount here. So I'll see what I get once I'm done. Um, you know, it's pretty easy to, to do half. So now I'm gonna take the other half of my dough and start working that one. I have the pasta laid out 
on a linen dish towel, as you can see, to dry. I don't have a pasta drying rack. I thought about asking Doug to make me one. I don't think they're very expensive. I just want like a wooden one, but I really think I could make one pretty easily with some dowels. Um, if I still had one of those wooden drying racks for clothes, that would work really well too, but I don't know what happened to mine. I don't think I still have it. I'll have to ask Doug if it's laying around somewhere because that would work good too. But I'm just going to let this dry all day and then when we're ready to cook it, it literally cooks up in like two minutes. It's really, really fast. So I'm looking forward to having this with our uh, shrimp for dinner. Okay, I am taking this minute to sit down just for a second and thought I'd catch up since it's the beginning of the month. Let you know how I did on my goals in January and what my goals are for February. So I told you one of my big things was to complete the challenge on my Apple Watch every month. Every month, the Apple Watch gives you a challenge. And if you do it, you earn a little virtual badge. You know I'm very competitive with myself. So that is going to be my goal for the year. Well, January, there were two. There was a ring in the New Year challenge, which you had to close all three of your rings. Your move ring, which is calories, active calories burned. Your exercise ring, which you can't adjust that. It's 30 minutes a day. Um, Cause I would adjust it a little bit higher cause we do tend to work out longer than 30 minutes, but that's set. And your stand goal, which means you have to be actively moving every hour for 12 hours during the day. So I always, Monday through Friday, always get my exercise goal because you know we generally work out Monday through Friday and sometimes on Saturday, it just depends on the weekend. And I always get my stand goals in. The calories, not all the time if we don't work out because burning calories and burning active calories are different things. So we worked our butts off for a week. We worked out seven days in a row and we got our, we earned that special ring in the new year badge. Well, then my goal for January was to go 119.7 or 0.2 miles or something. So I did that. I was so excited. I, I wasn't sure I was gonna do it, but I ended up doing it and finishing it early. So I was excited. Doug's was burning like 24,000 active calories. And I was like, oh my gosh, I could never do that. Wow, like thank God it's January and you have 31 days. Well, it came down to yesterday, but he did it. He earned his badge. So this morning when we woke up, there's, um, there's one that everybody has for February. It's called the Unity Challenge. It's, um, once again, you have to close all three of your rings for seven days in a row. So I, we've done it before. We know we can do that. And then my monthly challenge is like 23,000 active calories burned in the month. I saw how much Doug struggled burning 27 with 31 days in a month. And I have to burn like 23, four with only 28 days in a month. And he burns calories at a much higher rate than I do. So it is going to be hard. It is going to be a huge struggle. But we're gonna try. That's all I can say is we're gonna try, we're gonna try, we're gonna try. Um, the miles were pretty easy for me because I'm on my feet all day. It's gonna be a, oh, Doug's monthly challenge is 92 miles in the month. And that's a struggle for him just because he, his hair is getting on my nerves. He, you know, sits at a desk all day, whereas I am moving all day and I'm getting miles and, and I run, so I get miles. Um, so it's gonna be a big struggle for him to get those miles in, but you know what? We're both gonna give it our best. So that's one of the goals for February. And then, you know, my yearly goals are maintaining between 135 and 138. I'm like 130, 
139, 139 right now. So I'd like to a little bit. Um, my other yearly goal was organize my receipts better. I failed in January, but I failed through most of January. I started getting better at the end of January. Um, daily prayer, doing well with that. Less screen time. I'm doing crap with that, to be honest with you. Found a couple new YouTube channels that I absolutely love and hence sucking at less screen time and working on my uh, little one's lesson plans. That's going so-so. So they were my yearly goals. My January goals were hitting my Apple Watch challenges, which I did, and getting my water in. And I've done better with the water. I'm not perfect, but I have definitely done better. My quote in January was, nothing tastes as good as being in control feels. And I did really well through January. I really did. Um, I had some struggles but I pulled it out in the end. So I want to keep that going for February. My February goals are pretty much to just focus on the yearly goals and really focus on those fitness goals and, you know, keeping up with the water and, um, working to better our diets with better foods because you know i told you that's one thing that we're really trying to work on we're, we're really just trying to work on our whole selves with the real foods the real whole foods and we're never going to be perfect we're not we're not because there's some junk i just love too much and i'm not going to give it up but if we can do really well 85 percent of the time i feel that's a huge win in my book um We've really been looking at labels a lot closer and things like that. And some stuff we're just like, you know what? We like it too much. You know, I think I, to I talked about it the other day on my grocery haul video, my Near East rice pilaf. I love that. I've tried making rice pilaf at home. It's just not the same. <laughs> so I eat it twice a month. I'm not eating it every day or every meal. So I'm okay with that. Um, so we're going to, you know, try to work better on that and um, doing real good with reducing chemicals in our home. That's another one of our goals, uh, non-weight related goals. And we're doing really well with that. Um, our paper usage and our um, chemical usage. So I'm happy with that. And as far as weight loss goals, just to continue being so mindful and incorporating in those really good foods and making them fit. Because honestly, when I started this, I had the same attitude that a lot of people had. That, oh my gosh, I have to go sugar-free, I have to go fat-free, I have to go you know, processed food, and you really don't. And it took me not long to realize that. Um, you know, like I said, there's always gonna be some things I use that are not perfect, but I'm okay with that. So, you know, we're just gonna try to incorporate and fit in, use our points wisely, um, really make sure that we're eating good meals where we're satiated and we're not scrounging in the cupboard an hour later looking for something because we've all been there. I was actually like that a little bit yesterday. Um, we enjoyed our day of self so much yesterday. Oh my gosh. It was so nice just being, like, I, we never turned the TV on. We read, we napped, um, we talked. We were on our phones, like we played some games and I watched YouTube, but we just, it was just so nice. And we had a lot of stillness, a lot of quiet, and it was really, really what we needed. And it was wonderful. But we had a little bit of a late breakfast, and a big breakfast, a very hearty breakfast. Um, we had potatoes and eggs and a bagel and bacon. So I had a nice hearty eight point breakfast. So we really weren't hungry. And I was drinking tea a lot yesterday because it was so cold and so snowy and it was just so cozy being under a blanket in like nice warm jammies and you know, with a cup of tea. 
Um, so we really weren't hungry until about four o'clock. And I had, we originally we were gonna do takeout, but with the weather, we decided against that. And I pulled some soup out of the freezer. I just love having stuff in the freezer that I can just pull out when needed. So I pulled some soup out of the freezer and let that defrost and we heated that up and I had a, um, a baguette in the freezer, we heated that up and it was an absolutely delicious dinner. But I think because like that was the, only, the second meal we had, I was hungry in about two hours. And like, that's when I start foraging. And like, I can't decide what I want, so nothing's making me satisfied. I knew I was not hungry anymore. I had popcorn, I had a big bowl of popcorn, um, like four points worth of popcorn. And I knew I was not hungry anymore. It was just that I felt like the need to forage. Um, but I cut that off. I'm like, no, 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 no. You, you're not hungry, you don't need anything. So I'm really trying to be mindful of eating things that satiate and satisfy me so I don't forage. That was a very long story to get to that little point and I apologize. So that's where I'm at in February. That's my plan. I would like to, like I said, drop just a couple more pounds. Um, we'll see what happens. I plan to get back to, our workshops are opening up. I plan to get back to there this month. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm under goal, so I'm fine with that. Um, I'm not worried about that. I just, um, I'm going to wait a couple weeks until they get it all, all the kinks worked out. And I'm not sure if I'm going to stay for the meetings or not, because I feel that there's probably other people that need that meeting space more than I do. Somebody who may be just starting out or still on their loss journey, not necessarily their maintenance journey. And if they need to be there in person and hear our leader talk and hear her wisdom and hear what she has to say, I'd rather them have that limited seat than myself. So, um, and my quote for the month is what you eat in private shows in public. So I'm going to remember that when I'm foraging because you know, just because I'm not eating it on camera or just because Doug doesn't see me eating it or whatever, doesn't mean it's not going in my mouth. So that's my quote for the month. So that's all. I just wanted to catch you up. I am done in the kitchen, I think, for today until I have to make lunch and dinner. Um, I got so much done. My bone broth is going and my pasta is drying. Um... I'm still not, we're supposed to have Tuscan garlic shrimp tonight, but I really think I'm feeling some shrimp scampi. Because we were supposed to have that a couple weeks ago and it got bumped. So I'm really thinking I'm feeling that instead of the Tuscan garlic shrimp. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'll have to see what I feel like in a little. It's pretty much all the same ingredients. The Tuscan garlic shrimp just has more stuff in it. So the shrimp's thawing. So I can make a game time decision on that or see what Doug wants. Um, and now I'm going to do a little bit of sewing. I want to, you know, part of my thing was about not using a lot of paper goods. Um, and I was like looking up some things online and I saw this company that you can purchase things called unpaper towels. And I was looking at them thinking, okay, I can make those. So I looked up on Pinterest and there's like a million tutorials. Well, they're pretty easy. Like I am not gonna go crazy. Some people actually make them in the same shape, size as a paper towel. They put snaps in them and they snap them all together and roll them around a roll. Yeah, heck no. I'm just gonna make them in like the selecta size size cause I don't want anything too big. And I'm just gonna fold them and put them in a basket. Like either under my sink or on my counter, wherever. And then that way, when there's a spill or something like that, that's what we'll reach for instead of something else. Like I hate to reach for my dish cloth or my dish sponge to do that because I really like to keep those just to wash dishes with. So I think these will be good. And in, in a Facebook group I'm in, um, somebody was actually asking about like, you know, using cloth napkins and somebody commented that, no, I use paper because cloth is a big waste because you have to wash them and you're wasting detergent and water. And I just, I replied to her and I said, honestly, I said, for me, it's not because I wash all my cloth napkins and my dish towels and stuff 
right with my towels. Like I do a towel load. Um, so it's really not any extra water or any extra energy or any extra detergent because they're so small and they're so thin that you can just wash them right with your towels. So yeah, anyway, I am going to go work on those. It's just an old bath towel that I had in the donation box to go to the animal shelter. I pulled like one of them out and I had some flannel laying around. Now, would I like to go to the store and buy cute flannel that'll match my kitchen? 100%. Am I going to? No, because we're trying not to, you know, I did my, my monthly grocery shopping. We are trying not to spend any extra money. Just, we just wanna see if we can. And I wanna see how much I have left in each budget category at the end of the month and put that into my savings. You know, whatever works. So I'm going to mess with those and see how they turn out. So one side's gonna be a terry cloth towel and the other side's gonna be flannel. That was the most common one I saw online. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'll show you them when they're either in process or when they're done. Then it'll be time to make lunch. So I'm busy sewing my unpaper towels. And what I did, I took my bath towel and I cut it into seven inch wide by 11 and a quarter inch long pieces. The reason I chose that size was because that's what fit perfectly across my towel. And then I cut out flannel, look how cute. I originally bought this to make myself a pair of jammy pants and never did. So I decided to use it for these. That way I see them and they make me smile. So all I'm, I cut it, these out the same exact size and I just put them together with the right sides facing each other. And then you can, if you want, pin them. Um, I didn't pin the first two I made and they moved a little bit. So I'm gonna clip these I'm just gonna use my little clips that I got for Christmas in place of pins. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew along three sides or three and a half sides and leave an opening a couple inches wide so you can turn them right side out, almost like you're making a pillowcase. And remember, these are cleanup rags for your kitchen. It is not a wedding gown. It is not a prom gown. It is not something you are gonna wear. If they're not perfect, it's okay. Cause mine aren't. But you know what? When I'm cleaning up that spill on the counter, I'm not gonna care. So I just clipped them around. And like I said, I'm gonna sew. I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna sew up to the yellow one and then stop. So now I have this opening and I'm just going to turn them right side. I'm gonna clip the, clip the threads first and then I'm gonna turn them right side out. You could have actually gone a little bit tighter if you wanted, it really doesn't matter. Like I said, not a prom gown, not a wedding gown. Oh, I missed a little bit there, got a little too close, but we can fix that very easily. I'm just pushing out the corners and where I missed the seam, I'm just going to turn that under a little bit because now we're going to turn under, turn in, 
the opening and you can clip it if you want you don't have to you can paint it you can clip it you can do whatever makes you happy i'm just going to shove it under there turn it in and then we're going to top stitch starting at our opening and just go all the way around clipped the extra threads and then what I'm going to do because you're going to be wiping with this and I don't want it to separate like that I'm just going to go and use a quilting stitch just a straight stitch you can go down straight lines you can make a fancy pattern you can do whatever you want the first two I did I just did, I don't know if you can see the X, I just did an X and that's why it's staying together. This time, maybe I'll try to do something a little different. I don't know. I should just stick with the S or the X because that's what I can do. But maybe I'll try to go zigzag and just, like I said, it doesn't matter, they're rags. Time, I just kind of did a little zigzag pattern. I think I prefer the X. I'll probably do the rest of them in the X, but that's how easy they are. And I'm just going to fold them probably in thirds, find a cute little basket to put them in, or even fold them in half and just put them where they're nice and easily accessible. So that's it. As I'm sitting here sewing, I started getting a little peckish, so I am having a Cara Cara orange for a snack. Lunch today is chicken salad over a bed of shredded romaine. It was supposed to be tuna salad, but we still had some chicken left on the rotisserie that we bought, so I wanted to get that used up before it went bad. So it is two points for my chicken salad, zero for the lettuce, on blue and on purple, on green, I'm not sure how much chicken's in there, so not quite sure of the green points. And of course, some veggies. Can't forget about the veggies. Okay, all done. It did not take me long at all. It took me longer to cut because I'm a horrible cutter um, than it did to sew them. They were so quick and so easy. So we'll see how it goes. Now I just have to figure out where I'm going to put them and in what I'm going to put them. My bone broth is all done. It went for six hours. And just five minutes ago, I realized that I forgot to put the apple cider vinegar in. The acidity of the apple cider vinegar helps the bones to break down. I'm sure it'll be fine without it, but I'm really mad at myself. And look, I don't know if you can see that. It's snowing again. They said it was gonna snow again, and I didn't believe them because they said it was gonna do it earlier, and it's not early. So we'll see how much we get from this. I just looked outside to see if Doug was done shoveling so I could start dinner. And look, I love the fact that my 54-year-old husband got done shoveling the driveway and the sidewalk and is out there building a snowman. I just love that he's a kid at heart. Can't wait to see it when it's done.
I'm not sure if you can see it now because it's pretty dark out there, but there is our little snowman. Now that he's done playing in the snow, I can get dinner made. So Doug's done playing in the snow, so dinner is ready. This is the pasta I made this morning, my homemade pasta. So I used one cup of flour, one egg, and a little bit of water. So the whole recipe is 13 points on blue because of the one cup of flour. So divide it in half, that'll be six points for half of it. Look at all that pasta. Holy crap, I don't know if I'll ever make pasta another way again. Like, if I have time, I'm making homemade. I don't even think I'll be able to eat all this. So the pasta is six points and the shrimp scampi is four points. This dinner comes together in literally 10 minutes. It is awesome. So that is what we are having for dinner tonight. I have a 10 point plate. And of course I have a side salad going on and I'll put zero points worth of my balsamic on there. So 10 points for dinner. Well, my friends, that is it for me tonight. I don't remember because I talked so much today. If I recapped breakfast, because that was a new recipe, the oatmeal baked custard or oatmeal custard bake or whatever it was. Oh my word, it was delicious. It was so creamy and so custardy. I loved it and so did Doug. It was really, really good and I'm so excited to have it again tomorrow. <laughs> um, and I think it would even be good um, either room temperature or cold, not necessarily hot. I mean, I'll heat it tomorrow, but it was really, really good. And that will definitely, definitely be in the rotation. Um, it did take a long time to bake. So, and like I had time today, although I should have gotten it done a little bit earlier or started earlier. Um, so I think maybe if I have that on the menu again, like maybe the night before I'll make the oatmeal so it's just ready to go or maybe i'll mix the whole thing i don't know um, but i'll definitely make the oatmeal the night before just because that took time um and of course dinner was delicious oh i forgot how good homemade pasta is and i used to make it like, not regularly but more often and i don't know why i didn't um i don't know why i don't now time maybe i don't know but it was phenomenal and yeah I am very full, so I will be done eating for the night. I will probably have, I brewed some green tea a little bit earlier. Um, some, I forget what it was called, s'mores green tea. A friend of mine had an online tea party, a uh, sipology. I've heard of it, but never, you know, bought anything. So I bought a couple different things from her little tea party. And I'm not usually a green tea person, but this one sounded really interesting. And it is good. It's really good, so... I'll probably, I did brew a pot of that and I think there's some left. So I'll have a cup of that and call it a night. Still not sure yet tomorrow what's going on. I know I don't have the little boys tomorrow. Their mom is virtual again. So she's just going to keep them home. Not sure about the other ones, the two little girls and their brother. What's going on with them. So I don't know if I'll have another day off or not. I wouldn't be sad if I did. <laughs> Um, cause I didn't get, I got some of the pantry downstairs done, but not all of it. So need to get to work down there. So that is it for me. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And I will talk to you all really soon.